Did Van Gogh really cut off his ear to give it to a girlfriend or eat yellow paint? Let's sort the fact from the fiction. Hello everyone, welcome to my studio. Today I want to talk about one of the most well-known artists of modern time. Um, you might have heard of him. He's a straw hat enthusiast, ginger bearded Dutch guy. His name? Vincent van Gogh. So you've probably seen works of art by our Dutch friend. Um, he has a very expressive style and what I like about van Gogh is that he was able to portray an exuberant beauty even in the most simple subject. But he's also known for his sad tragic life. Um, still today you have a lot of art historians and psychiatrists who are studying Van Gogh's life and the mental illness he suffered. Van Gogh's Dutch and has a younger brother named Theo. Um, Theo is going to become an art dealer in, he's going to live in Paris. Van Gogh's going to travel a little bit around. Um, for a lot of time in his life. So Vincent van Gogh had a series of odd jobs when he was younger, especially priests, but that didn't last long when Theo encourages him to keep on drawing, to explore his talent. It's needless to say that van Gogh's parents were not quite pleased to learn that their oldest son wanted to pursue art as a career. Theo is the one supporting Vincent van Gogh financially. In 1884, Vincent's gonna agree to provide artworks to Theo in exchange for financial support. Van Gogh's gonna move to Paris. By the way, Paris is the place where you want to be if you're a young artist. You're able to meet other creators and it's definitely a place for inspiration. Van Gogh was strongly inspired by the Impressionists and the way they use color. Um, so still today we use the term post-impressionist to describe Van Gogh's style. When he's in Paris, he's going to meet artists like John Peter Russell, Henri Toulouse-Lautrec and Paul Gauguin. But after spending two years in Paris and drinking a little too much, our friend's gonna settle down for the south of France in a city called Arles. Over there, he wanted to establish a collective art studio. By the way, if you heard stories of Van Gogh um, reusing paint from fresh canvas or covering up an old composition, these are not false stories. I mean, still today, art supplies cost like an arm and an ear. Even though his friends share the interest of traveling south to um, collaborate in the studio, only Paul Gauguin will do it. And it wasn't without convincing. Trust me, Theo had a part to play in this. He actually paid Mr. Gauguin to move to the south of France to Vincent van Gogh's studio. Van Gogh and Gauguin have both strong different opinions about the world. And after a while, it's gonna create tensions in the relationship so much that it's gonna escalate to a tragic night, the night of December 23rd. On that night, after an argument where Gauguin threatens to leave the south of France, Van Gogh is gonna cut off his ear with a razor blade and bring it to the nearby brothel. See, there's no girlfriend in the mix. Um, and by the way, Van Gogh was quite unlucky in love. He never married and only had a few short love stories. With this gesture, we have to understand Van Gogh is acting erratically, out of a state of psychological crisis. But the woman of the brothel, they're gonna call the police and the following morning, the police is gonna find Van Gogh um, lying in his apartment and they were able to save his life because he was almost bleeding to death. A few months after the ear incident and a few more episodes of mental instability, Van Gogh is gonna get voluntarily admitted to the Saint Paul Asylum in saint rémy de provence What we know so far is that Van Gogh was suffering from a range of different symptoms, from depression to anxiety, unstable moods to even hallucinations. After a few more incidents of crisis, Van Gogh is going to be able to paint again in the asylum. And yes, during these episodes, he did attempt to swallow things, including paint, but nothing mentioned yellow paint especially. He tries to swallow paint because paint contains lead, which is a way to harm yourself by lead poisoning. Although Van Gogh suffered episodes of mental distress in Saint-Rémy, trust me, that was an extremely productive time and that was a time that brought us well-known masterpiece by the artist, including Starry Night, Irises, Vase with Roses, and a few self-portraits. After his stay at the St. Paul Asylum, 
Vengo is going to move closer to his brother in Avassois near Paris. His changing relationship with his brother, his mental illness, among other things, made Vengo overwhelmed with life. On the day of July 27, 1890, only at the age of 37, Vengo is going to shot himself in the chest with a pistol in a wheat field in Auvergne. Vengo was able to walk back to the nearby inn to seek help from doctors and his brother Theo was rushed to meet him before it was too late. But sadly, Vengo is going to die 29 hours after the incident. Sadly, we'll never know the exact reason why Vengo did this terrible action that day. But remember, over a career of only 10 years, Vengo painted around 900 paintings. It is believed that Van Gogh only sold one or two of his paintings. When we look at it, yes, Van Gogh is a bit like the stereotype of the tortured artist. But remember, you're looking at an artist whose paintings are admired all around the world. And I think what we have to remember from him is that even in the darkest moment of his life, he had a passion to paint the world in a bold, colorful way. So this is it for today. I hope you liked this vlog. I have a question. Um, how would Van Gogh's story be different if it happened today in 2016? Um, let me know in the comment section below. If you have suggestion for the next art vlog, let me know too. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Until then, see you later.